Hi, my name is Dr. Jeff Williams, the Director of Invasive Cardiac Electrophysiology at the Heart Rhythm Center of the Good Samaritan Hospital. This is Lecture 3, What are Pacemakers and How do they work? The objective of today's lecture is to be able to describe the basic components and operation of a pacemaker. The most common type of pacemaker involves placing the pacemaker in the upper left chest under the collarbone. The left upper chest placement minimizes the risk of damaging a patient's dominant arm and is generally a less technically demanding surgery. Pacemaker leads are placed into veins that flow back to your heart. The incision is one to three inches long and the device pocket is made under the skin but above the chest wall muscle. The pacemaker itself is comprised of a battery, circuitry that serves as its brain, and the header that is used to connect the leads to the pacemaker itself. You can see on the x-ray that the majority of the pacemaker size is due to the battery. Leads can be fixed to the inside of the heart actively with a screw mechanism or passively using flexible tines. The size of various pacemakers are compared to a quarter in the figure. Pacemaker leads are implanted using a special surgical technique called the sterile modified Seldrichton technique. First, a needle is advanced into the subclavian vein. The wire is then placed through this needle to allow a hollow tube to be placed into the vein. This is called the sheath. The sheath is a hollow tube that permits the placement of the pacemaker lead. The lead is then fed back to the heart. and fixated to the endocardial wall. You can see the fixation mechanism in the video it consists of a screw in this case. The hollow tube is removed and this process is repeated for each lead. The table shows how various pacemakers can be programmed. A single chamber atrial pacemaker only involves placing a right atrial lead which will only pace your top chamber or atrium if the rate falls below a program cutoff. A single chamber ventricular pacemaker involves a right ventricular lead and will only pace your bottom chamber or ventricle if the rate falls below a program cutoff. A dual chamber pacemaker involves both a right atrial and right ventricular lead and can pace both or either chamber if the rates fall below a program cutoff. A biventricular pacemaker often involves a right atrial lead and leads in both the right and left ventricles to resynchronize the heart if a patient has or is at risk for heart failure. Common clinical scenarios are also shown in this table. Want to learn more? What is a Pacemaker? A Cardiologist Guide for Patients and Care Providers is available in print and electronic versions at Amazon.com. More lectures about pacemakers are available at heart-rhythm-center.com. Thanks for listening.